Hello, movie lovers. I'm Adam. This is Does It Hold Up? Box Office Edition, where every Tuesday we go over what were the top 10 movies at the weekend's box office, we check in with a few other charts, and we flash back to a movie from the past. I don't want to mince a lot of words here because there's just one story everybody's talking about from this past weekend, and I want to get right into it. Well, let's start with the top 10 movies. At number one was Joker, Folie Adu, with a grand total in its opening weekend of only $37.7 million. Okay, that's what everybody's talking about. How much this movie failed. A couple years ago, when Joker, the first Joker movie came out, it made $97 million, just under $97 million in its opening weekend. This one just debuted to only $37 million. That is about 40% of what the last one opened up to, which is incredible. That was a billion dollar plus movie worldwide. And this one, although it opened up to 118 million worldwide, it's not going to come anywhere near that number. I know a lot of people love the first movie. I personally, not one of them. I actually thought the original movie was pretty bad. I had seen that same story, the same beats, the same look, the same feel in plenty of other better movies. But I know a lot of people really liked that first one and they were stoked for this second one. Casting Lady Gaga as Harley is what I think the first step wrong was. She's a good actress. She's not a great actress. She's a great singer though. And I think that's what worried people. We're casting a singer in this role, in this movie. It's gonna be a musical. And it ended up being a musical. Not even a good musical, a pretty terrible musical. The critics are tearing this movie apart. Audience scores aren't much better. They are despising this movie. I don't know how you go from the top of the DC universe of many consider one of the greatest DC movies to making possibly one of the worst DC movies. I just don't know how that happens. And I haven't seen the movie myself yet because like I said, I wasn't a fan of the first one. I wasn't in a rush to see the sequel because why would I be? I didn't want a sequel. I didn't want the first one. But people that did go see it don't really care for it. And I've heard a lot of chatter of like, maybe that's what director Todd Phillips wanted. He wanted you to hate it. He was making a commentary on all the people that talked shit about his first movie. Maybe, but you still have to make a movie that people want to see. I mean, you're in the money-making business. Yeah, you make movies to do it, but you gotta make money. So the fact that your budget was much bigger than the first movie, and you're gonna make way less, those two things don't tend to mix well. So it's very interesting to watch this movie fail so miserably. This is one of the lowest first weekend number one movies, number one openings of the entire year. And I'm really excited. Maybe that's a poor choice of words. Maybe I'm not excited per se, but I'm very interested in what's gonna happen next week. So how big of a drop is it going to be in week two? So next week, make sure you come back and watch the show because I'm going to have a new chart about the lowest opening weekends of 2024, ranking all the movies. Then I'm going to have another chart about superhero movies and big drops. Do you remember last year with The Flash when it dropped like 73% in its second weekend? I imagine this movie is going to have a similar drop maybe even worse, which is kind of crazy to say. This is more Morbius numbers than it is anything else in the DC universe. I don't know how I feel about this right now, but I'm very excited to see what happens next weekend. Okay, let's finish these charts. In second place is The Wild Robot with another 19 million, a 47% drop, but it has crossed 64 million so far in just two weeks. In third place is Beetlejuice Beetlejuice with 10.1 million, a 37% drop here in its fifth week. Nobody cares though because it's made 265.3 million domestically so far. 
In fourth place is Transformers 1 in its third week, a 41% drop, still bringing in about 5.4 million, and it's at 47.2 overall. Speak No Evil stays right here in fifth place in its fourth week with 2.7 million, a 35% drop, and it's slowly making a little money here, 32.5 million. Deadpool and Wolverine is still in the top 10 in its 11th week here at 6th place, with another 1.5 million, a 43% drop, but 63, 633.9 million. It's not going to catch Inside Out 2, but if it can stay in the top 10 next weekend, which it probably has a pretty good chance, it's going to tie for the longest time spent in the top 10 here in 2024, so that's at least something. And Disney's probably not worried about it. They own both of the top two movies this year. A new movie comes to the chart here in seventh place with White Bird. I forgot this movie was even coming out, and apparently so did everybody else because it only made about one and a half million. The Substance jumps back into the top 10 this week with 1.35 million, a 34% drop from last week, which is just kind of crazy to think about. It fell out of the top 10 last week when it made more money. It made much less money, 34% less, this week, and somehow jumped back into the top 10. And I have thoughts about that a little bit later, so stick around. The Substance has made $9.7 million so far. Megalopolis drops all the way to ninth place here with just over $1 million, a 73% drop. Hmm, that number sounds familiar. And only $6.5 million domestically. And my old ass is in 10th place with $892,000, only a 59% drop from last week, but it's about $4.5 million. Two movies came into the top 10, so two movies dropped out, and those two movies were Devara Part 1 after just one week, and the re-release of Howl's Moving Castle also after one week. Next up is the chart where we compare 2023 to 2024 to see how well we're doing this year versus last year. Are the weekends kind of beating each other? How are we holding up here? So let's go ahead and take a look at it. 2023, the number one movie was the opening weekend for Exorcist Believer, which severely underperformed here domestically. And it led the way to every single movie having a grand total of $72.9 million, just about $73 million across all releases for the 40th weekend of the year. And here in 2024, it beat that weekend yet again, with $85.5 million being led by Joker uh, Foliadu, second Joker. Probably we're looking for a bigger number here. We wanted a bigger increase because of the release of this very anticipated film. Just couldn't live up to it. But as you can see, if you look at this chart closely, the last five weekends have belonged to 2024. There is a really good stretch happening here where we are either even with or beating 2023. And if that continues for the rest of the rest of the year. I'm sure theater is going to be happy. Studios are going to be happy. And I know people who love going to see movies in theaters, like me, are going to be very happy as well. All right. Just a little bit ago, I talked about how it was crazy to see the substance fall out of the top 10, have a decrease this week, but somehow jump back into the top 10. And it really got me thinking. That's most likely because Joker Foliadu did not help the box office. Looking back at some previous charts, you notice that when there's one big release that is drawing people to the theaters, all the other movies around it tend to see an increase as well, or at least not as much of a decrease. They see a bump in business because people are already going to the theaters. They're going to go check out whatever that big one is, and if they can't get to that one, they're going to see something else since they're already there. So, when a movie succeeds really well, either in its first, second, third week, it tends to boost the entire business, not just with its numbers, but just every other movie playing at the same time. So Joker failing this poorly in its opening weekend, you can see really affected other movies. The 10th place movie this weekend made less than a million dollars, yet it still was one of the top 10 grocers here domestically. That's not a great thing. We don't see that often here on the show. 
usually the 10th place movie has made at least 1 million. But because nobody was going out to see Joker, they just weren't going out to the theaters at all. So when I hear people complaining of like, oh, there's only ever that like one big movie in theaters, you're right. That's usually what people know about. But at the end of the day, even that big one release, the new Marvel movie, the new DC movie, the Star Wars movie, the whatever it is, is at least getting people into theaters, giving them a chance to then go check out some of these smaller movies that maybe they wouldn't even have thought of seeing. So as much as these big movies do hurt theaters, they also help them at the same time. And it's just a really interesting concept of if one succeeds really well, the others are going to kind of piggyback off of that and see a slight increase in revenue as well. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to what are the top 10 movies of all of 2024. There was no change on this chart, but we'll take a quick look at it anyway. Inside Out 2 is still the number one movie with just about 653 million. Deadpool 3 is in second place, about 20 million behind that. Can it close the gap? Probably not because it just got released to streaming within the last week. You can rent it or purchase it on Vudu or Fandango or iTunes, Google Play, wherever. And it's most likely going to end up hitting Disney Plus by either the end of October or early November. So I don't see it doing a lot more in theaters. Third place is Despicable Me 4, still hanging out. Doom Part 2 in fourth, and Twisters is in fifth place, but this will be the last week that it's in fifth place because Beetlejuice 2 in sixth place is going to move up next week. They are separated by about two and a half million dollars right now, and Beetlejuice 2 probably has made that while I'm filming this. In seventh place is Godzilla Kong, followed by Kung Fu Panda 4 in eighth, Bad Boys Ride or Die in ninth place with just under 200 million, and then Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is still hanging on to that 10th spot, releasing all the way back in May of this year with 171 million. Great job, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I don't think you're going to stay on this list for the rest of the year, but it's very exciting that you made it this far. That's it for the box office this past weekend. Like I said, there wasn't a lot happening with Joker failing so miserably. None of the other numbers really jumped off the page or really were worth talking about all that much. So said my piece about Jokers, let you, filled you in on what happened over the weekend with all the other movies. So now's the point of the show where we do a flashback to the movie from the past. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. I love going back to look at old movies to see how well they did in theaters. And because Joker came out this weekend, I decided we should look at a Batman movie. So we're going to go back to 2005 and take a look at Batman Begins. Christopher Nolan's first Batman movie, which in my opinion is the best Batman movie. Fight me in the comments if you need to, but this is the best iteration of Batman in any movie ever. Let's take a look. Batman Begins, week one, $24 million is what it brought in. Studio made about 60% of that, so just around $14.5 million. And you're probably wondering why that number was so low, and that's because Batman Begins opened up on a Wednesday here in the United States. I don't know why. It just did. Second week. The movie made $70.7 million. Studios got $38.9 million of that. Domestic Week 3, another $110 million for this movie is what it finished its run at. $55 million is what the studios kept. Internationally, it did all right. Another $167.5 million. Studios kept 40% of that, so they got about $67 million. It did have a Chinese release, but it did not do well there. Regardless of what people might think was a little pandering to it, it only took in just over $1 million. Studios kept 22.5%, which they don't really care about because it was only 236000 The budget for Batman Begins was $150 million. Kind of crazy for the start of a superhero thing that you're not sure is going to work, but they did it anyway. Marketing. I said they only used $75 million. Normally, I give it a little bit higher than that, but this movie wasn't marketed very well, nor a lot. It kind of had a few commercials, a few trailers, but it didn't steal the spotlight. They weren't putting a big marketing campaign together. The movie grossed $373.8 million worldwide. After all, the studios took their cut, 
the movie netted $175.8 million. If we subtract that $225 million for budget and marketing, you can see that Batman Begins lost an estimated $49.1 million. It did go on to be one of the most purchased DVDs, Blu-rays of 2005. It was rented in the, t it was one of the top 10 renters of the year as well. So the movie definitely made money after it released from theaters, but during its theatrical run, it was a flop. Kind of surprising. I thought for sure that movie did a lot better. But even if they lost money on this movie, they are happy with the entire franchise Nolan made because they made bank on the next two. All right, that's it for the show this week. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Joker, Batman Begins, anything else we talked about. What do you think of the new background? Felt like switching it up a little bit. I'll be back again on next Tuesday with another box office roundup. But in the meantime, make sure you like, share, subscribe, because the fourth episode of me going back in time to redo the Oscars is dropping this weekend. Make sure you do not miss it. Until I see you next time, just remember to be good to yourself, be kind to others, and keep watching movies.